of Green Party presidential nominee Jill Stein, who's kicked up a raging ruckus in the political world over the past week by filing for ballot recounts in Wisconsin, parts of Pennsylvania, citing discrepancies in areas that use paper ballots versus those where electronic voting took place. Stein also plans to request a recount in Michigan tomorrow, and she's raised more than $6 million from 140,000 donors for this effort. Dr. Stein, Dr. Stein joining us now from Boston. Dr. Stein, great to have you with us. Um, Paul, great to be Ryan, with you. Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House today, said that your recount effort is a ridiculous fundraising stunt. That is a quote. Uh, how do you respond to the Speaker of the House? What are you afraid of? Um, you know, the American people have a right to vote, and we have a right to a transparent process, and to be assured that, especially in Wisconsin, where these voting machines are being used that are no longer used in California because they are so prone to error and to tampering, they are being uh, uh, eliminated in uh, Maryland and in Virginia. Uh, we should have quality uh, voting systems in all of our states, and. Uh, the American people deserve to have confidence in our vote, especially coming out of this very divisive and bitter election. Let's have assurance that our, our votes are being counted securely and properly. Right. There's not an election lawyer I know right now who's been involved in recounts in the past who thinks that there's any way these recounts are going to change the outcome in Wisconsin, let alone in Pennsylvania, where the margin is so large. So is this mainly an academic exercise? And I don't mean to belittle it in that sense. I mean that you're trying to go through and say, this, this technology doesn't work, this technology does work, to try to restore faith in the system or, or find places where there are holes in the system. Or is this really an effort to try to overturn the outcome of the election? So let me say it's not an effort to overturn the outcome of the election. This is not to help one candidate and hurt another. We had already declared we would do a recount in Michigan uh, before the winner was declared. So this is not about who won. It's really about the process and ensuring the American people at a time of record cynicism and uh, disappointment in our political system that we can be confident uh, in our votes. And it's not just an academic question. Let me say that we've seen plenty of trouble with voting machines when we've actually looked. We haven't often looked, but like uh, during the recounts in, uh, in Ohio, uh, 90,000 votes that didn't get counted in Toledo. And the only reason we found out about that was because the people of Toledo uh, in the communities of color felt like they were getting short shrift. They brought a legal case, and sure enough, 90,000 of their votes uh, had not been counted. Why? Because the machine wasn't properly uh, calibrated, so it was just a little bit turned, and it wasn't capable of seeing that those votes were actually voted on. So, you know, these questions have been raised for long enough. There are other uh, sort of red flags here, which is that you had extremely razor-thin margins in these three states. Uh, we were using voting equipment that is suspect in one another in one way or another, or there were other red flags like in Michigan, where there was a sky high number of blank votes, eighty thousand blank votes, which was much higher than in any prior election. So there were warning signs here. Also the fact that the outcome was the opposite of what had been anticipated. So those factors taken together is why those three states uh, were identified as the areas that we are most likely to find problems. And, you know, what we really want here is a voting system where we don't have to show that there was some real, uh, you know, major problem in order to have built-in transparency and accountability in the system. And we say going forward, we should have not, you know, for one thing, we shouldn't be using faulty, uh, perilous voting machines that have been proven to be error prone and uh, friendly to tampering, we shouldn't be using those machines in the first place. And that secondly, we should have built in audits. Dr. Stein, I, I totally appreciate you coming on. I appreciate totally your commitment to people having confidence in the system, to making sure the machines operate safely. I've watched a ton of your interviews over the last few days and I'm completely baffled by this. How will recounts in these three states achieve your goal of restoring people's confidence in the system. If you think about how it's going to play out, how could that possibly be the result? Well, you're right. I mean, there are many concerns about the system, but this is a first step. It's also a very time critical step. You know, just all tell the me, other just things tell me that over we the next do. few days, just tell me over the, the, or the next few weeks as this played out, tell me the result that you would want to see that would restore people's faith incrementally in the system. 
Well, what I would love to see is that uh, the system is working flawlessly, and that would be really great. Um, based on the prior performance of these machines, I don't expect that. You know, at the other hand, I don't expect enough that we're going to overturn the results of the election. But I think the issue has been raised, and all I did was put out a press release and open up a web page where people could donate, and people chimed in from all over the country, 140,000 donors, at a, an average contribution of $45. You know, it's no uh, secret that yep. there is widespread cynicism and disappointment in our system.